The Alpha Game Chapter 1. The Alpha Game Begins The memories of youth are often wrapped in the soft cotton candy hues of nostalgia, encapsulating a time when worries were trivial, laughter was plentiful, and life seemed like a never-ending adventure. However, as years roll on, those vibrant recollections slowly fade into the monotone grey of forgotten past. But there are always exceptions, memories that hold such significance that they manage to stay vivid and clear in our minds. For me, it was my old Nintendo console. It was an unassuming piece of plastic, a contraption painted in dull shades of grey. The design was simple, adorned with just a few buttons, a couple of switches, and a cartridge slot. It wasn't much to look at, and yet it was my gateway to a world of limitless wonders. With every cartridge I slid into it, the console would come to life, its monotonous grey exterior belying the vibrant fantasies it could spin on my old television screen. One game in particular held my young heart captive. Super Mario Bros. 3. The name itself is enough to send waves of nostalgia crashing over me, the adventurous plumber in his red overalls. The green pipes leading to underground coins, the fire-breathing dragons, the magic mushrooms, and the perilous platforms that seemed to hang in mid-air. They were my childhood companions. I spent countless hours in this whimsical world, chasing after Princess Peach, triumphing over villainous turtles, and relishing in my pixelated victories. As the years passed, I found myself outgrowing the bright, cheerful world of Mario. I sought thrill and suspense. I yearned for narratives that were complex, grim, and infused with a sense of unease. Thus began my foray into the world of horror games. There was an eerie pleasure in walking through dimly lit hallways of haunted mansions, sensing the presence of lurking spectres in every shadow, the palpable tension of being hunted, the dread of the unknown, and the adrenaline surge from a close escape from a monstrous entity. These became my new definition of joy. The more the game made my heart pound, the more I craved it. Years later, in the prime of my thirty-seventh year, a mysterious thread in an obscure corner of the Internet caught my attention. It was an underground gaming forum, a digital gathering of like-minded souls who sought thrill and terror in their games. An anonymous user had posted a cryptic message about a game that promised to redefine the limits of fear. The game was simply titled Alpha Game. The aura of mystery around this alpha game was piqued by the fact that it was still in its alpha stage, a game under development, a brainchild still in its infancy. What was strange, however, was the size of the game. Even for an alpha stage, it was disproportionately large, suggesting a mammoth narrative or elaborate gameplay. Despite the inexplicably large size and the unsettling aura it had around it, curiosity got the better of me. I decided to download the game. When the download finally completed, I found myself sitting in front of my computer screen, staring at the game icon. With a cocktail of anticipation and apprehension coursing through my veins, I double-clicked the icon and initiated my journey into the world of Alpha. The game opened to an intro that seemed unnaturally realistic. It depicted a long, dimly lit hallway, stretching as far as the eye could see. The walls were lined with vintage wallpaper, peeling off in places to reveal the crumbling plaster beneath. Old, worn-out portraits adorned the walls, their subject's eyes following my every movement. At the end of the hallway stood a door. It was an old wooden door, the paint peeling off from years of neglect, and the brass doorknob was tarnished with age. But it wasn't the age of the door that caught my attention. It was the eerie familiarity of it. It was a near-perfect replica of the bedroom door from my childhood home. The realism didn't end there. It wasn't a graphical representation that you'd expect from a video game. Instead, it looked as if it was captured through a handheld camera. The attention to detail was staggering. The grain of the wooden door, the flaking paint, the rusty keyhole, everything was uncannily lifelike. It looked so real that I felt like I could extend my hand and touch it. The scene was so profoundly unsettling, the silence so deep it felt like a tangible entity. Then cutting through the silence came the haunting notes of a piano. The melancholic tune combined with the eerie realism of the scene sent chills running down my spine. Just when I thought the sense of unease couldn't get any stronger, the title of the game appeared. Emblazoned in blood-red, gothic letters across the screen was the word Alpha. The simple, ominous title only added to the eerie atmosphere that the game had effortlessly established. The intro scene dissolved into black, and when the screen lit up again, I was at the main menu of the game. 
the design was hauntingly minimalistic. There were only three options, start, load, and exit. But it wasn't the lack of options that caught my attention. Standing to the left of the screen was the silhouette of a young boy. He was dressed in fancy clothes like those worn by children of the Victorian era. His black hair was slicked back, shining under the soft light that hung over him. His face, however, was a blur as if someone had taken a brush and purposely smudged his features away. He stood there in the dimly lit room, his head occasionally tilting as if pondering who might be on the other side of the screen. The chilling depiction of the boy, combined with the eerie intro and the melancholic music, set an unsettling tone for the game. Though unnerved, I found myself intrigued. With a strange mix of fear and fascination, I moved the cursor over the start button and clicked. Little did I know the real terror was yet to begin. Chapter 2 The Descent into Terror The moment I clicked the start button, the screen went black. The melancholic piano tune stuttered and turned into a cacophony of distorted notes. An unsettling electronic buzz filled the speakers, making me cringe. Suddenly the screen was assaulted by a flurry of pixelated static, the colors merging and forming incomprehensible patterns. The game had crashed. At least that's what I thought. I tried to move my mouse, but the cursor was frozen in place, locked in a sea of frenzied pixels. My heart rate picked up. It was only a game, I reminded myself, a simple system crash, but it was hard to shake off the sense of unease that had taken hold of me. I reached for the power button on my computer, intending to reboot the system, but then something peculiar happened. My hand froze mid-air, my eyes glued to the screen. The pixelated static was starting to fade, replaced by the familiar interface of my web browser. I hadn't launched it. The browser seemed to operate on its own accord, moving to the same obscure forum where I had downloaded the Alpha game. It was happening by itself, and I was merely a spectator. But the forum looked different. There was no trace of the game, no download link, no discussion thread. Nothing. Instead, a video thumbnail occupied the center of the web page, a play button beckoning me. I hesitated. Then, taking a deep breath, I moved my mouse, no longer frozen, over the play button and clicked. The video sprang to life. It was a trailer for the Alpha game. The trailer began with a blur, abstract shapes merging into one another. Slowly it started to come into focus, revealing a familiar sight. An old bedroom, its walls adorned with posters of old Nintendo games. The bed was unmade, clothes scattered around and a retro gaming console perched on a small table. It looked exactly like my room from childhood, adding another layer of eerie familiarity to the game. Sitting on the floor was a child engrossed in a video game, his back to the camera. His age was hard to determine, but he couldn't have been older than eight. His black hair was messy, his clothes rumpled, but there was an intensity to him that was almost unsettling. He was completely absorbed in the game, oblivious to his surroundings. I watched, transfixed as the camera slowly panned towards the TV screen. The video feed began to distort, the sound crackled, and the room faded into a blur. Suddenly the trailer froze, the room, the child, the TV, everything was suspended in time. Yet the audio continued to play, now filled with hushed whispers and eerie echoes. I moved my mouse cursor across the screen, trying to exit the trailer, when something strange happened. As I moved my mouse, the camera angle in the video began to shift. It felt as if I was controlling the perspective of the trailer. My heart pounded in my chest, with a sense of growing dread. I moved my mouse again, confirming my suspicion. Slowly the camera shifted downwards, my breath hitched as I found myself looking at a pair of decayed hands. The skin was rotten and grey, the nails long and sharply pointed. As the shock wore off, a horrifying realisation hit me. The rotting hands belonged to the character in the video game that the child was playing. I was not just watching a trailer, I was playing the game. The game character stood in a long, dark hallway identical to the one from the game's intro. The ominous silence was broken by the distant echo of dripping water, the sound resonating through the hallway. As I started to navigate through the hallway, the only light source was the flickering glow from a hanging bulb, casting long ghostly shadows on the damp walls. Every now and then the game would transition to a loading screen. Each time it did, the blurred face of the child from the main menu would appear. There was something profoundly disturbing about the boy's blurred face. Every time the loading screen popped up, the child seemed to twitch violently, 
his head swinging from left to right as if racked by a severe seizure. The sight sent shivers down my spine, amplifying the haunting atmosphere of the game. As I continued down the hallway, the unsettling atmosphere was punctuated by the sounds coming from the rooms on either side. They were faint at first, barely a whisper. As I moved closer, the sounds became more distinct. They were voices, voices filled with fear, begging for mercy. Their pleas went unanswered, followed by chilling sounds of suffering. An involuntary shiver ran down my spine as I realized that the pleas were not directed towards me. They were speaking to someone else, someone inside the game who seemed to derive pleasure from their suffering. The haunting laughter of the game character echoed in the hallway, a cruel, mirthless sound that sent chills down my spine. With a heavy sense of dread, I continued through the dark hallway, tormented by the unseen horrors that lay within each room. As the unseen victims cried out, their voices began to fade, replaced by an ominous silence that seemed to swallow everything. The game was living up to its chilling reputation, and the real horror was only just beginning. The end of the hallway was finally in sight, the familiar wooden door from the intro looming ominously. As I approached it, a hint box popped up on the screen, a simple instruction that read, Please press H to hold your breath. As I stared at the command, my heart pounded in my chest. I hesitated for a moment, then took a deep breath and pressed H. Chapter 3. The Room Beyond the Door Pressing H on the keyboard, I could feel a chill running down my spine. The game character's rotten hand reached out towards the doorknob. It turned, and with a creaking sound that echoed ominously in the silence, the door began to swing open. My character moved forward, stepping over the threshold and into the unknown. The room I entered was not like any regular room. It was vast, stretching out into infinity. The floor was comprised of grey cobblestone, damp and cold, while the walls were a sinister dark red as though stained with blood. A faint flickering light from an unseen source cast eerie shadows around the room. In the middle of this enormous room was a single wooden chair. Strapped to it was a figure. As I moved closer, the details became clearer. It was a man, bound by thick, rusted chains. His head was bowed hidden by a shock of matted hair. His clothes were torn and dirty, signs of struggle evident. But what unsettled me the most was the fact that he looked disturbingly familiar, though I couldn't quite place where I'd seen him before. As I approached the figure, the game character's low, chilling laughter echoed through the room. The figure twitched at the sound, lifting his head slightly. His face was obscured by shadows, but I could see his eyes. They were wide with fear, pleading silently for mercy. A shiver of terror ran down my spine, but I pressed on. I was now close enough to touch him, the rotten hand of the game character reaching out. Suddenly a dialogue box appeared on the screen with the words, Press E to interact. I hesitated, my hands trembling slightly over the keyboard, but curiosity overcame fear and I pressed E. The game character reached out, touching the bound man's face. The man flinched at the contact, letting out a pained whimper. Then, to my horror, his face began to morph. His features contorted, twisting and shifting as if they were made of putty. It was a grotesque sight, enough to turn anyone's stomach. Yet I couldn't look away. Slowly his face began to resemble the little boy from the main menu, the same blurred face and dark hair. But his eyes were filled with a terror that seemed too mature for his age. The transformation was complete, and the child looked at the game character, tears welling in his eyes. Suddenly I could hear his voice, a tiny, trembling voice filled with fear. Please don't hurt me, he whispered. But his plea fell on deaf ears. The game character only laughed, a cruel, mirthless sound that echoed around the room. I was paralyzed, a sickening feeling rising in the pit of my stomach. This was too real, too disturbing. The game character started to raise its other hand, the one with long, sharp nails. A dialogue box appeared again. Press F to strike. I froze. I didn't want to press it. I didn't want to hurt the child, but it seemed I had no choice. With a heavy heart, I pressed F. The game character brought down its hand, and the screen filled with static, obscuring what happened next. All I could hear was the child's cry of pain and fear. The sound resonated in my ears, making my blood run cold. I wanted to stop, to shut the game down, but I was paralyzed. A silent observer to the horror unfolding on my screen. When the static cleared, the child was gone. The room was empty, save for the wooden chair and the chains. The game character laughed again, the sound even more chilling than before. 
Suddenly the game faded out, transitioning to a loading screen. The blurred face of the boy was there, but this time it was different. His eyes were wide with terror, a single tear rolling down his face. The sight of it sent a chill down my spine. That's when I heard it, a soft whisper barely audible. It was the child's voice, whispering something I couldn't understand. I leaned closer, straining to catch the words. Help me, he whispered so softly that I almost missed it. His plea hung in the air, a chilling reminder of the horror that I had just witnessed. Shaken, I took a deep breath, ready to continue this eerie journey. The game character was once again standing in the hallway as if nothing had happened, but I knew better. There was something more to this game, something far more sinister than I could have imagined. Chapter 4 The Haunting Echoes after the encounter with the boy, the game character was standing once more in the daunting, seemingly endless hallway. It was hard to shake off the dread that clung to me like a second skin. I found myself sitting at the computer, my fingers hovering over the keys, hesitant to make the character move. Every inch of my being screamed at me to stop playing, to shut off the computer and forget this game. But there was an inexplicable pull, something that kept me rooted to the spot, desperate to know more. So I pressed on, I guided the game character down the hallway, the creaking of the floorboards beneath his feet seeming louder now. The silence was stifling, interrupted only by the character's breathy laughter, the sound echoing off the walls. It was twisted, a stark contrast to the fear I felt. It was then that I noticed the hallway was not as barren as I had initially thought. There were doors, doors of all shapes and sizes lining the hallway. They were old and worn, much like the door at the beginning of the game, each one holding a secret of its own. I approached the first door, the game character's rotten hand extended, ready to turn the knob. The anticipation was killing me, but before I could make him open it, a soft whimpering sound resonated through the hallway, making me freeze in my tracks. It was a child's whimper, filled with pure, unadulterated fear. I whipped the character around, his eyes scanning the hallway, but there was nothing. The whimpering grew louder, morphing into desperate cries for help. They seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere at once. I wanted to cover my ears to block out the horrifying sounds, but I was too scared to move. Then, as if things weren't terrifying enough, the hallway suddenly plunged into darkness. I could hear the game character's laughter, louder now in the deafening silence. The screen was black, the only source of light coming from my desktop's faint glow. I was on the verge of panic, but something told me to stay calm, to wait. After what felt like an eternity, a faint light started to fill the screen. The hallway was back, but it wasn't the same. The walls were now a dingy yellow peeling wallpaper hanging off in strips. The doors were gone, replaced by portraits. Each portrait depicted the same boy, his face blurred, his eyes filled with fear. The whimpering had stopped, replaced by an eerie silence. Guiding the game character, I approached one of the portraits. The boy's eyes seemed to follow us, his fear palpable. A dialogue box popped up with the words, Press E to interact. With a sense of foreboding, I pressed E. The game character reached out, his rotten hand touching the boy's face in the portrait. It was then that a voice echoed around the hallway. It was the boy's voice, a chilling whisper. He's coming! Suddenly a low growl echoed, shaking the very foundation of the hallway. The portrait started to shake violently the eyes of the boy in each portrait widening in terror. I could hear the game character's laughter, but this time there was a hint of fear in it. The growl turned into a roar, a terrifying, deafening sound. The screen started to shake, blurring the images. I gripped the edge of my seat, fear coursing through my veins. The game character started to move, his steps hurried, as if running away from something. And then silence. The screen stopped shaking. The roar was gone. The hallway was back to its normal state, the portraits replaced by doors once more, but the fear remained, a constant companion in this horrific journey. With a deep breath, I moved the game character forward, ready to uncover the secrets that lay beyond the next door. Chapter 5 Behind the Second Door As the ominous silence wrapped itself once more around the game, I steeled myself and approached the first door of the seemingly endless series. It was similar to the rest old, worn, and eerily familiar. Each creaking step the game character took seemed to echo endlessly down the corridor, a chilling reminder of the loneliness this game conveyed. 
As I neared the door, a dialog box popped up, a simple command. Press E to open. The anxiety within me twirled, a nauseating waltz that threatened to make me sick. Yet I couldn't back out now, not when I was so far down this rabbit hole. With a shaky breath, I pressed E. The door creaked open and the character stepped inside. The room was dimly lit, the faint glow coming from an old-fashioned bulb hanging from the ceiling. The walls were a grimy, peeling off white, damp with age and neglect. The room was sparsely furnished, containing only a small bed, a dilapidated wooden dresser and a tarnished mirror hanging precariously on the wall. A soft, haunting melody wafted through the room, the notes disjointed and eerie as if played on a broken music box. It was familiar, a melody I knew from my childhood, though the name eluded me. In the centre of the room was another figure, much like the previous one. It was a woman, her face turned away, her body rigid with what seemed like fear. The character's rotten hand extended towards her, but she didn't react, her body remaining as still as a statue. A dialogue box appeared. Press E to interact. My heart pounded against my chest as I hesitantly pressed E. The game character's hand moved closer, gently touching the woman's shoulder. As if awakened from a trance, she turned around. Her face, like the boy's before, was blurred, yet there was a familiar feature. She had the same dark hair, the same terror-filled eyes, then she spoke. Her voice was shaky, filled with fear and a tinge of familiarity that made my stomach turn. He's always watching, always. She trailed off, her gaze shifting past the game character, her eyes widening with terror. Before I could react, a low growl filled the room, a monstrous guttural sound that made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. The screen began to shake violently, the image blurring. Then it all stopped, leaving the room in an eerie silence. The woman was gone, her presence replaced by a sense of impending dread. I felt an instinctual need to get the game character out of the room, to escape from the unseen threat. I made him sprint towards the door, his rotten hands pushing it open. As he stepped back into the hallway, a dialogue box appeared on the screen. Don't look back. I felt a shiver run down my spine. The terror I was feeling was almost palpable, turning the game into a reality far too vivid for my liking. Yet I couldn't help but be curious about the unknown entity that seemed to be haunting the characters in the game. With a newfound determination, I directed the game character further down the hallway, towards the next door. The laughter, the cries, the pleas for mercy echoed in the background, a chilling soundtrack to this nightmarish game. Chapter 6 The Longest Night after the chilling encounter with the woman, I took a moment to collect myself. The room had vanished, swallowed by the ever-present darkness. The game character stood frozen in the hallway, his laughter ceased, replaced by a strained silence that seemed to amplify the echoing cries and pleas for mercy from unseen voices. I found myself sweating, the horror of the game seeping into my reality. It was a terror I hadn't experienced even during my horror gaming marathons. Yet something compelled me to continue. I directed the game character to continue down the hallway towards the next door. The oppressive silence was occasionally broken by a faint, disconcerting whimper, like the sound of a wounded animal trapped and helpless. It was punctuated by an ominous growl that seemed to rumble from the very core of the game, threatening to consume everything in its path. As I moved further into the game, the cries became clearer, more human. Each one was filled with so much fear and pain it was palpable. The voices begged for mercy, pleaded for their lives, their words becoming a chilling symphony of terror that left me with a gnawing sense of dread. Then the game character's laughter returned, soft and haunting, a sinister contrast to the desperate pleas. His rotten hands flexed and clenched as if anticipating something. The laughter grew louder, his excitement palpable as he neared another door, an old wooden one similar to the one that led to my childhood bedroom. A dialogue box appeared, a simple command, press E to open. With a deep, shaky breath, I pressed the E key. The door creaked open slowly, revealing a room bathed in a sickly green light. It was empty, save for a small old television set, placed on a wooden stool in the middle. On its screen was the white noise of a disconnected channel. The static buzz filled the room, breaking the eerie silence. Suddenly the static on the TV flickered, and an image appeared. It was the same boy his face still blurred, his dark hair messy. He was staring at the screen, his eyes filled with fear. But this time there was something else, 
a glimmer of recognition. It felt as if he was staring right at me. As I watched, frozen in terror, the boy's mouth began to move, forming silent words. I strained to understand, to decipher his silent plea. Suddenly a voice echoed in the room. It was soft, scared and familiar. It was the boy's voice, and he was repeating a single sentence, a chilling mantra. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming. A chilling shiver ran down my spine, my heartbeat echoing in my ears. The image on the TV flickered, distorting the boy's face into a terrifying grin. Then the TV screen went blank, plunging the room into silence. The game character's laughter filled the room, his excitement palpable. But this time there was a hint of madness to it, a twisted joy that made my skin crawl. I felt an instinctual urge to escape, to guide the game character out of the room. I made him turn towards the door, but it was no longer there. In its place was a wall, blank and unyielding. A sense of dread filled me as the reality of the situation sunk in. We were trapped. Suddenly a dialogue box appeared on the screen, press H to hold your breath. A wave of panic washed over me, but I knew I had no choice. With my heart pounding in my chest, I pressed H and braced myself for what was to come. Chapter 7. Faceless Terror As soon as I pressed H, the game character's laughter stopped abruptly, replaced by a haunting silence. It was as if the game had frozen, the only movement being the flicker of the now blank television set. I felt the tension rise, my heart pounding in sync with the flicker on the screen. Slowly, the game character began to turn, his rotten hands twitching in anticipation. I could feel my own hand tremble on the mouse, the cold sweat trickling down my spine. It was as if I was trapped in the game, each moment becoming more real than the last. Suddenly the TV flickered back to life, its glow painting the room in an eerie green light. On the screen was the faceless boy, his image distorted and shaking. His mouth was moving rapidly, the words he was saying unintelligible, lost in a sea of static. I strained to understand to find meaning in the faceless boy's frantic movements. Then the screen split into two, the second screen showing the image of a long hallway similar to the one outside the room. The camera was moving, getting closer and closer to the last door at the end of the hall. A sense of dread washed over me as I realized what was happening. The he the boy was warning about was coming, getting closer with each passing second. The game character's rotten hands began to shake, matching my own trembling fingers on the keyboard. The screen split again, adding a third image. This time it was an extreme close-up of the faceless boy, his blurred features shaking as if he was sobbing. The boy's voice echoed through the room, his words distorted but filled with terror. He's here! Suddenly the game character started to move, his long, rotten fingers reaching out towards the TV. As he touched the screen, the images started to distort, blurring into a mess of static and colors. Then all the lights in the game went out, plunging the room into darkness. A low growl echoed through the silence, making my blood run cold. The game character's laughter returned, louder and more manic than before. His rotten hands began to move, touching the walls of the room, his long, sharp nails scratching against the peeling paint. Suddenly a dim light filled the room, revealing the figure of a man standing by the TV. His face was blurred, just like the boy and the woman but there was something different about him. He was taller, his frame filling the room with an ominous presence. His dark hair was a stark contrast to his pale, blurred face, his features hidden under a layer of static. Then he spoke. His voice was deep, cold, and void of any emotion. You can't hide forever. The game character's laughter reached a fever pitch, a terrifying symphony to the man's chilling statement. As the man's words echoed through the room, a dialogue box appeared on the screen. Press E to interact. My heart pounded in my chest as I hesitantly pressed E, bracing myself for the unknown. Chapter 8. Unseen Monster The instant I hit E, the game went silent. No scratching, no laughter, not even the white noise of the TV set. Everything fell unnervingly silent. My skin prickled with the weight of that silence, the atmosphere thick with anticipation. Something was about to happen, something terrible. I could feel it in my bones. As I forced the game character to approach the man, he turned around. His features were obscured, lost in a swirl of static, but I could see his blurred eyes staring right at me, not at the game character but at me, and in those shapeless eyes I saw something familiar. The TV flickered back to life, the harsh light illuminating the figure of the man. 
I squinted at the screen, trying to discern his features through the static. I couldn't help but feel a sense of déjà vu. Something about this man, his stance, his hair, even his blurred silhouette, was oddly familiar. Suddenly the game character moved on his own, reaching out towards the man. His rotten hand trembled, his sharp nails reflecting the flickering light of the TV. I could hear my own heartbeat pounding in my ears as the game character's hand got closer to the static-filled figure. Then, without warning, the man reached out and grabbed the game character's hand. His grip was strong, his static hand shaking with what seemed like suppressed anger. The game character let out a chilling laughter, the sound echoing in the quiet room. Just as I was about to pull the game character back, the screen started to flicker wildly. The static-filled image of the man was replaced by the boy, his face still blurred but his fear palpable. His mouth moved, forming a word I could barely hear over the pounding of my heart. Run! Suddenly a monstrous growl filled the room, the sound echoing from the depths of the game. I could feel it reverberating in my bones, my instinct screaming at me to run, to escape. Ignoring the chilling laughter of the game character, I made him turn around, desperately searching for an exit. But the door was gone, replaced by a solid wall. There was no escape. Suddenly the game character's laughter stopped, replaced by a horrific guttural growl. His rotten hands began to change, morphing into something monstrous. His long, sharp nails turned into razor-sharp claws, his skin peeling away to reveal pulsating flesh underneath. Then a dialogue box appeared on the screen. Press R to run. Without a second thought, I slammed my finger onto the R key, and the game character started to run, his monstrous form filling the screen. Chapter 9 The Chasing Shadows Hitting the R key was like igniting a fuse. The game character shot forward with an unnerving speed, his monstrous form rippling with each stride. The hallway seemed to stretch endlessly before us, shrouded in an inky darkness that swallowed all light. All I could see was the game character, his mutated form grotesque and horrifying. His laughter had returned, a grating cackle that echoed off the unseen walls. The hallway started to change, the dark shadows twisting into distorted figures. Faces, all blurred and devoid of any identifiable features, emerged from the darkness, their silent screams adding to the symphony of terror. The whispers returned, now a cacophony of voices begging, pleading, and screaming for mercy. And above it all, the game character's chilling laughter rang loud and clear. Despite the fear clawing at my insides, I forced myself to keep going. The monstrous form of the game character sprinted through the nightmarish hallway the relentless laughter punctuated by the horrific screams and pleas for mercy, and through it all I could hear the monstrous growl, distant but gaining. Suddenly the hallway started to shrink, the walls closing in. The game character's monstrous form seemed to expand, his razor-sharp claws scratching the encroaching walls. I could feel the confinement, a claustrophobic nightmare playing out in real time. The game character's laughter began to sound strained, the madness replaced by a chilling fear. Just as the walls were about to close in, the hallway expanded again, revealing a door at the end. It was my old bedroom door from childhood, the familiar paint peeling and cracks just as I remembered. A feeling of desperate hope surged within me, fueling my determination to escape this endless nightmare. A dialogue box appeared on the screen, a command, press E to escape. My heart pounded in my chest as I slammed my finger onto the E key. The game character lunged at the door, his monstrous claw ripping it open, and then everything went black. A deafening silence filled my room, the echoes of the game character's laughter and the screams fading away. My hands trembled on the keyboard, cold sweat trickling down my spine. I sat there, frozen in shock, the horrors of the game still vivid in my mind. Slowly the game screen started to flicker, an image slowly coming into view. It was the faceless boy, his blurred features still filled with fear, his mouth moved, forming two words that sent a chill down my spine. He's here. Chapter 10 The Final Door As those chilling words filled the screen, my heart pounded like a drum. He's here. I couldn't comprehend what the boy meant. Was the boy referring to the monstrous growl, the laughter, the game character? Suddenly the darkness lifted, revealing the same old bedroom from my childhood. It was just as I remembered it. The worn-out bed? the dusty shelves filled with old games, and the small TV where I used to play Super Mario Bros. 3. Only this time it was not on my TV screen, I was in the game. The game character had morphed back into his earlier form, the rotten hands and sharp nails back to normal. 
but his laughter remained a chilling echo in the room. I could move him around, but there was nowhere to go. The room was a perfect replica of my old bedroom down to the smallest detail. I walked the character to the TV set and the screen came alive, displaying the blurry face of the boy. His face was distorted, shaking with what looked like suppressed sobs. He was saying something, his mouth moving rapidly, but no sound came out. Then, without warning, the boy's image flickered and changed. The man from earlier appeared on the screen. His blurred face was static-filled, his eyes hidden beneath the distortion. But his voice, his voice was as clear as day. You can't hide forever, he said, his tone cold, devoid of emotion. The game character's laughter rang out, a chilling symphony to the man's haunting statement. As the man's voice echoed through the room, the game character started to change again. His hands turned rotten, his nails grew long and sharp. His laughter grew louder, echoing in the confines of my old bedroom. Suddenly a dialogue box appeared on the screen. Press H to hold your breath. My heart pounded in my chest as I pressed H. The laughter stopped abruptly, replaced by an eerie silence. I moved the character towards the old bed. Lying on it was the Nintendo console I used to play as a child. I made the character pick it up. Another dialogue box. Press S to start the game. As I pressed S, the TV screen flickered, displaying the words Super Mario Bros. 3. The game started, and I watched as my character played. It was surreal, playing my old game in this terrifying game. Suddenly the game character turned towards the screen, his rotten hand reaching out. A final dialogue box. Press E to end the game. My hand trembled as I pressed E. The game character dropped the console, his laughter echoing in the room. The screen flickered and went dark, the chilling laughter slowly fading into silence. Suddenly a bright light filled the room. When I opened my eyes, I was back in my living room. The game Alpha closed on my computer screen. A cold sweat ran down my spine as I stared at the screen. The room was eerily silent, the haunting laughter still echoing in my ears. It was just a game, a horrific, terrifying game. But it was over. Or was it?